So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Maury Weiss, Group CEO for Excel Media, also the original founder. Um, and today, I'm sure I see some familiar faces out there. So some of you, for some of you, it's not the first time you hear this. For, for those that it is, I'll be, what we're going to do is just going to review what the company does, how we do it, uh, what it is that we have been doing in the last couple of years, what we're planning for the future. And um, if there's any questions later on, we'll take them at the booth, and uh, we'll take it from there. So what is Excel Media? Excel Media is a performance marketing company. What we do is we attract paying users from different online and mobile channels and direct them to online businesses. Now, if you would have seen this presentation two, two years ago or a year and a half, that would not say online businesses. It would say online gambling operators. And that is because historically our core market, our core vertical has been online gambling. These days, as part of what we've done post IPO, which was in March 2014, we've definitely diversified the group with gambling being about 60% of current run rate revenue, while it has been, of course, growing every half, every year. The rest is about 20% from social gaming, which is those games you see on your mobile phone or iPads or, or tablets or and so on, and other products such as software products, financial betting, app installs, and a very, various other products. Um, we work on performance-based models. Currently, more than 50% of our revenue is from lifetime revenue sharing. And when I say lifetime, I actually mean it, uh, as in we sometimes get paid for users who referred 8, 10, 20, 20, 12 years ago. And I will review all the different business models as we progress in the presentation. We work with a variety of different clients, uh, about 150 di different gambling operators, some of the high street names here in the UK that you know, William Hill, Patty Power, Labbrooks, and so on, as well as some of the big Scandinavian bookmakers, like Betzone, like Unibet, and some of the others. Some of the big social gaming studios, uh, Zynga is a, fa is a famous name, Can Candy Crush King are a very famous name, Caesars Interactive, which is one of the biggest companies in the business. We work with about 50, 60 of them, as well as various publishers of different products, from software, from software products to, app, to apps and financial trading. All together in the group, I would say we work with about 300, 350 different clients in different verticals. And I'll explain a bit later on how the sales process works, and you'll see that effectively there's not much of a sales process because the way it works, our clients come to us for services and not the other, other way around, which is one of the keys of performance marketing. We have a very consistent track record of profitability and growth. We've upgraded forecasts, I think, five times since the IPO two years ago. We've paid four dividends. Um, very strong balance sheet. Uh, we, we haven't published our full year numbers for 15 yet, but expect it to be with $33, $34 million in the balance sheet. Very, very cash generative business. As a, and as I said, we've been paying dividends, and the policy is minimum 50% dividends. I'm going to skip the kind of things that we all know. Demand for service marketing is, is high. Online is, online is growing. People like to gamble. People like to play games. People like to trade financials. We all know that. But I would, li would like to say is that um, this business has been diversifying not just in terms of clients, but also in terms of countries we work in. If you would see it again, I'm doing kind of a before and after kind of thing. If you would see this, if you would meet us at the time of the IPO, you would see a business that was 100% gambling, 80% or 80, 90% of the revenue coming from Scandinavia. These days, as I said, gambling is about 60%. Scandinavia these days has been diluted to mid-30s, while it has been growing every year. US went from 0 to 20%. UK from almost non-existent to close to 10%. So we're seeing a very different business model, and we're living this vision of ours that we have, that this is not a, some kind of marketing company that is associated to the gambling world, but a performance marketing company that can deliver high-value users to any kind of product that can be sold or delivered via mobile phones or websites. Revenues, and this is our unaudited numbers for 2015. We should be publishing our full year numbers in the end of March. A minimum, at least $88.6 million in revenue and adjusted EBIT of at least $28.2 million. This is up from 50 and uh, 17 last year, so you can see quite significant growth. And I would add that we are in the midst of a strategic review that they announced in the last week, so of course our, our brokers have probably wired the room, so I don't say something I'm not supposed to say, but I'm going to try to keep it as interesting as possible anyway. But that was, the, that was the official disclaimer, I have to say. So keep moving away, because I like to walk, but apparently I have to stand here. Um, the business model. On the left-hand side, you have our three divisions. The three divisions are effectively the same thing. They're a production line. The product at the end of the production line is similar. It's a high-value paying web or mobile user. Currently, we have publishing, which accounts, and I'm going to review each one of them as we go along. Currently, we have publishing, which accounts to close to 40% of sales. which. Then we have media, which is our fastest growing division, which accounts for close to 50% of sales. These numbers are for age one of 15. Now you can expect this mix to change a bit because of an acquisition we made on the 1st of July, which came into effect on the second half. So I would expect media to be a little higher and publishing to be a little lower as a result of that. 
Um, media is our fastest growing division, also in terms of consolidation of acquisitions we've made. Partner network, last but not least, currently about 13% of sales. All three divisions, as I said, basically deliver the same product, which is a high value paying web or mobile user. In exchange, we get some kind of performance based model. Now, what are performance based models? Uh, for example, lifetime revenue share, which I've mentioned. In lifetime revenue share, we would refer a user to, let's say, a sports betting user, let's say, to Bet365. And, and let's take for argument's sake that we would refer this at a 50% net gaming revenue deal. Most of our deals are somewhere between 50 to 40 to 50% of net gaming revenue. Uh, 45, 50% is the common rate. And these are lifetime deals. This means that if this user comes in and deposits and wagers and creates gaming revenue for the operator now, we would get 50%. If the user leaves and comes back in five years, we would still get 50%. If the user moves between the sports book, the casino, and the poker, it doesn't matter. We would still get the 50%. This is lifetime revenue sharing. And as I said, approximately a bit more than 50% of the group revenues are occurring lifetime revenue sharing. The other models are also performance based, but a bit different. For example, cost per acquisition. In cost per, acqu per acquisition, we get paid a fixed amount of money when the user refer performs some kind of predefined action. Now, a predefined action could be either a deposit $100 or a wager $1,000 or uh, play 50 hands of poker or make 100 sports bets. It doesn't really matter based on we what we defined. But we will get a bounty fixed, let's say, kind of, kind of, you can call it fixed lump sum at the beginning and nothing further on. But again, this is a performance-based model because the user has to wait to make money for the client. Clients don't pay us for services. They don't pay us for traffic. They only pay us when they get the product they need, which is a paying user. Cost, CPI is, a, is another model. It's cost per installation. This is a model that's extremely common in social gaming, as in casino-themed games, strategy-themed games like Farmville or, Zing, or Cityville and these kind of things. There we get paid when the user installs the game on their mobile device, on their tablet, or on their computer. It is a variable cost per installation based on game and geography. Meaning, I'll give an example. For Zynga, as a company, has dozens of games. Obviously, some of them are high value games, some of them are low value games, and some countries are high value countries and low value countries. So, for example, a Zynga poker player in the US will pay us more than a Cityville player in Indonesia. But still, of course, there's, there's a large reach for each kind of them. We don't really mind as long, as long as we can reach our gross profit targets. These are the models. These are some of the clients, uh, quite diversified business model. And I'm going to go through the main two divisions because we're very much capped on time. Uh, usually, I finish this in five minutes. I don't know what happened. Publishing, what we do here, we run a network. We own, operate, and develop a network of more than 2,000 sites in 18 languages. These are informational sites predominantly about gambling. Sports bet, for example, in odds comparison, odd comparison sites in the UK, casino strategy sites in Swedish, poker news sites in Italian, you name it. The list goes on and on. These are websites, mobile sites, and mobile apps. They rank well on search engines or on the relevant app stores, either the, the Apple App Store or Google Play. And then we get users that are interested in one of the, uh, some of the information that we have to offer, any one of the things I mentioned before. They come, they read. They, these sites are obviously very much optimized via in-house technology that we've developed for the last 10 years that helps us, A, attract the correct users, B, give them the correct experience that they need, and C, make sure that the end result of their visit is not just that they visit and churn and leave, but they actually go and do what we want them to do, which is go try the service they just read about. So they would go to a casino operator, they would go to a sports betting operator, et cetera, et cetera. I would give a disclaimer and say that we did not invent publishing or search engine optimization. This is something that's existed since the internet existed. Ever since there's been internet, there's somebody trying to rank well on search engines. However, there's two main reasons why we think we do it better and more sustainable than others. One of them is that we completely took intuition out of it. Historically, search engine optimization or publishing is kind of like, OK, I'm going to try to do this to manipulate Google into ranking me. No, that doesn't work. It used to be the realm of pale, skinny guys living in their mom's basement, lighting candles and listening to whale music. We don't do that. We have developed, we used 10 years and countless time, countless money and time to develop a system that takes the guesswork out of it. We have 50 people that what they do, they analyze, they forecast, they check, and they optimize their efforts to make sure that these sites are outranked for the right words and the user flow within the sites is correct. Much less guesswork, much more, in, much more intuitive. And the concept is here that we can manage much larger amounts of data. And I'll give an example of an acquisition we made last year for a UK sports betting site. This site was run by seven people and made X amount of money. When we bought it and moved it to our, to our platform, it's run by one person and makes 1.5X. Not by the, because this, this person is so much smarter or more capable, it's because they have a platform taking away all the Excels and the legwork of running these sites and optimizing them. The other part is that we actually deliver good value to the users. These are not doorway pages. These are, some of them have thousands of pages optim that, are, that are uploaded, updated maybe 10 times per day, 20 times per day. We have a network of more than 300 writers around the world that give us fresh content in various topics. 
We're actually giving the users the value they want, they, that they come, they return, they recommend. And this is a very high gross profit business. The, the guidance we give is 71 to 73% gross profit. We finished age one of last year at 80. It will come down because we want it to come down. We want it to come to 72, 73, so we can invest in top line growth. But that's the guidance I'll give you. 20 to 25% revenue going forward, revenue growth going forward, and the public. This is just the numbers that we had in age one of 2015. Obviously, I have to be careful what I say these days. So. Media. Uh, what we do here, uh, we run thousands of simultaneous self-funded campaigns across di different platforms, and I'll explain this more in depth in the next slide, but the idea here is that we're not an agency. It's not that in a traditional agency model, if you wanted to buy users from us, you would give us a, a budget and we would manage it for you and take 8, 10, 12, 15% margin. Here we run our own funds and our own money. We deploy in-house technology that we've developed for, as I said, 10 years to A, buy the correct media, B, use it for the correct purposes, and B, optimize the user flow. Two big acquisitions we made in this world, in this, in this, in this realm, is EDM and, Mar EDM and Marmar Media, which we've integrated completely, and they're sitting on the same platform now. And I will use the next slide to explain what, how we actually do it. In terms of performance in age one of 15, we're talking about 35% gross profit margin, and this is our fastest growing division on the top line. This is how it works. And I know this looks a little scary, but I'll explain it, it's quite easy. And right now I really wish I could move there, and I hope you're gonna hear me. Self-funded campaigns, that's how it starts own funds and we bid on ads now where are we bidding on ads we bid on ads anywhere that we can it could be google but where we buy adwords it could be facebook that we're buying sponsored feeds it could be app nexus which is an ad exchange or any ad network we buy from hundreds of different vendors we don't really care where we're buying as long as it's high quality and compliant legally so we will buy it i'm going to get back to the technology part at the end i just need to finish the little flow here now we bought the inventory now because we didn't buy it on behalf of someone we bought it on behalf of ourselves we need to choose what to do with it select what brand or what even what vertical we want to do it. Let's say, and I'll give a working example here, let's say we bought via programmatic method a uh, mobile ad of some, on somebody's phone in the UK, a male between the age of 40 and 50, that is currently watching a football game on his mobile device. So our decision tree, which I'll get back to the technology part a bit later on, will decide what to do. Okay, do we want to offer this guy online gambling, sports, online gambling, social gaming, fa financial trading, or app installs? Obviously because it's the UK and he's watching a football game, let's give him sports betting. Now, it doesn't end there. Do I want to give him Ladbrokes, Will Hill, uh, Paddy Power, 888, any one of these? Let's say I chose Ladbrokes. Do I want to offer him a cricket bonus, a cricket landing page, or a golf landing page, or a football landing page? I'll offer him football. Do I want to offer him a 10-pound free bonus, or 100% up to 100 pounds? All these decisions have to be made in real time. Now, it's not just to convert the user, but it's also to convert the right user. So let's say we've converted the user at Ladbrokes, and he's become a paying customer. We still don't get paid for this user because this user needs to generate a net gaming revenue for the operator. So we have to make sure we convert the right user to the right place, and this is where all the tech comes into play. Now we gather, our job doesn't end at the, de at the depositing level, we gather data, non-personal data, what happens about from, with all the users that we refer to across the different verticals, in terms of demographics, age, age, location, things like that, uh, when they deposit, how much, what games they played, and so on and so forth, and we always use this big data element to, in a real-time environment, being able to to optimize the, 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 uh, optimize the, the user flow and the user funnel based on, on country, brand, creative, deal, and so on. So think, think of it as a decision tree that's based on historical data that we're gathering. Now we're gathering this data from across many different verticals, many different countries. And I'll give an example how it works, where the technology comes in place. Techno there's two pieces of technology here. One, to buy the correct inventory. The system tells us, do you want to buy at what price and what platform, and B, the yield management part of it is once we've bought the, the inventory, what do we do with it? What brand, what vertical, what offering, and so on. It's all based on tech, all based on real time, and this helps us optimize our efforts a little more. I know this is a little complicated, I know it's, it's a little bit limited 15 minutes, but I'll be happy to answer questions about this at the booth later on. We're constantly using historical data that we gather that is non-personal, that is across different operators. We're gathering this from 150 different gambling operators. 50 social studios, and m many dozens of other clients in many, in thousands of different sales funnels constantly. Financial track record, I know I've got one minute, so as you can see, it's pretty much, pretty much self-explanatory. The business is performing quite well, I would say. We've been growing ever since the IPO and a few years before, uh, both on revenue and both on profitability. Growth opportunities in publishing, we will continue building and developing more sites. We will probably buy more sites because it's part of what we do. The majority of the growth in publishing, the vast majority, is organic because we built these sites on our own. In media, we will probably add more verticals uh, and more different offerings that we can while developing our in-house tech to help us buy more correctly, more efficiently, and to help us practice yield management. 
In summary now, look, uh, record-breaking year again. I said this about 2014 last time I was here, so I'm happy to be able to report that again. We've, we've accelerated the integration of one of our main acquisitions from last year. We have acquired a majority stake in a media company that has been consolidated. And we feel very comfortable at the future, as I said, with, bit, with the before and after kind of thing I did uh, wh where we were two years ago and where we are now. It's a completely different business. It's very much, much more diversified. It's growing very fast. And I think the outlook is very, very positive. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.